Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so we talked about what happens with max material boundary and least material boundary when it comes to a flat, you know, flat datum. Um, but what about when it's a feature of size datum? It's it is slightly different. So the when it's Ricardo's material boundary, we have to make sure that our um, our actual mating envelope makes contact with the datum feature. It has to come into contact. So if that's like a cylinder, you're going to squeeze down the cylinder and hold the cylinder. Uh, otherwise, it would just drop out of your hand. And how it's going to be held is going to depend on the geometry, the order of precedence, and the tolerances. However, you can change that. Your feature simulator could have a fixed size if it's modified with the max material boundary or least material boundary modifiers. In those cases, your simulator wouldn't be required to make contact. Um, however, the order of precedence would still be applicable as well as any tolerances. Okay, so with a feature size datum that's at the max material boundary, then you stop, your datum stops progressing at the max material boundary, it doesn't move any further. Um, so if I have a cylinder, I stop at the max material boundary that cylinder can move back and forth, even though that was you know, supposed to be constrained. So let's actually look at that. Okay. Um, so when we apply our max field boundary right here, that is going to keep our feature of size datum at its max material condition size. Now, in this case, there is only a size tolerance applied to the features, okay? Only a size tolerance applied to this feature right here, this datum A. If there was a form tolerance applied to it, things would be different. So the max material boundary is also the same thing as the max material condition, okay? Max material boundary, max material condition, they're the same thing. You know, there's some point right here that'll be one plus 0 0.005 inches. And that point, that's my max material boundary. That is where my jaws or whatever is holding this in place would stop, allowing this to bounce back and forth. However, here you see that I have applied a straightness tolerance to my axis, or in this case, the drive median plane of this feature, that it's axis, drive uh, median line. So this has changed things. Our max material boundary is no longer the max material condition because we also have our straightness tolerance there. Okay, we also have a straightness tolerance. So since it's applied to an axis, it means that this feature is allowed to bow 0 0.002 even when it's at the max material condition. And so my max material boundary um, is going to be, well, whatever my max material condition size would be, plus that tolerance to give me 1.007. So if I have a chuck that's holding on to this, it's going to stop at 1.007 inches um, because of that straightness tolerance. Okay, now this is a bit of a difficult one to grasp, but the big thing here is that if you apply a datum to a feature control frame, then that feature control frame's tolerance is going to be adding into it if that datum is referenced at the max material boundary. Okay? So if I reference this at the max material boundary later, then I'm going to have to take into account this tolerance. Otherwise, I would not. I would just take into account the size tolerance. So it's only going to matter if you see somewhere else. You know, I've got my symbols, I've got my tolerance, and then they bring it in at the max material boundary then all this we just did matters. Otherwise, it's just gonna simply be the max material boundary is your max material condition for that feature of size. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.